I'm not the expert, but I've definitely got one uh, on the line. Very pleased to welcome John Cordwell, business leader, philanthropist, and of course, founder of Phones for You. John, thank you very much for finding time to join me. It's a pleasure. Look, in a nutshell, um, I think there have been huge changes uh, going across the, the workplace and the workplace environment, which we're all obviously about. But I am looking, for example, at some young people who have not been working in an office environment, but been lucky enough to find a, a good job nevertheless. At home, alone, not getting of the social interaction. I have to ask myself, is it good for them, let alone is it good for that business, that these people are now thinking seriously about never returning to the office? And so the question is? Well, do, do you think we're putting at risk are um are the work the work dynamics that contribute both to our social well-being by being isolated at home and also do companies uh, uh, perform better when they've got people together well without doubt i mean if if you look at the advantages of working from home they're minimal they uh they obviously cut down on travel time um it's environmentally friendly and it saves office space. That said, then that's the end of the advantages. All of the rest of disadvantages being disturbed from home, lacking inspiration, lacking motivation, lacking banter, lacking social in- interaction, lacking learning. You know, you look at what happens in the office right the way through from senior management down to uh, apprentices. Everybody's in the learning curve. Even the most senior people are in a learning curve from uh, people around them, either their peers or their superiors. And that learning and that uh, that inspiration and that drive and that passion feeds all through the office of an organization. And if we lose that, we lose an incredible amount of benefit. Now, that doesn't mean there isn't a place for working from home. Clearly, there is in certain instances, and that's for each employer and employee to decide. But without doubt, the vast majority of people need to get back to work, need to be accountable, need to be inspired, managed, driven, and be in an environment where it's really generating a exciting uh, exciting learning future for people. Do you think it's actually um, helped productivity or actually harmed productivity? I know it's been such a, a weird year for business and a, a very tough one for many businesses, but um, it, will we be able to draw conclusions about productivity? Many people make the case that actually they can be more productive at home. No, that's nonsense. That's people who just want to work from home because it's easy and because, you know, they can have a cup of tea with the wife or the husband and they can take the dog out for a walk. Now, I'm not saying that some people won't work brilliantly well from home. So, you know, that's not to say that they won't. But the vast majority of those people that put that argument forward, it's because it suits them and it's easy. It's less accountable and they'll have an easier life and they've got no traveling. But without doubt, society will lose massively on productivity by not returning to the office. But I do want to emphasize, because I don't want to sound dogmatic about this, that it's for everybody. There are people, because of their character, personality or job, that will be more efficient from home and more effective. And that's fine where that's the case. And so any sensible, intelligent employer with an employee that's dedicated and and really wants to be doing their best for the business, there is an agreement to be had there to work from home that in those cases may well work. But the vast majority of people need to be in that dynamic office environment, learning, growing, inspired, managed, motivated. And to lose that would be a complete and utter productivity fiasco. You see, I I think when you said... Look, those people who want to stay at home who are saying that in answer to my question, they just want to have a cup of tea with the wife or whatever. I, I'm not sure that helps because I I also think that a lot of people will say, well, the reason I can't work for the boss wants me back in the office is he doesn't trust me. All right. I, I, I mean, look, I, I've been there. I've run, you know, companies not as successful as yours, but I've run companies. And I used to think that was what it was, a bit of a scam. I'm back to the 80s, to the 90s. Uh, that's not going to rebuild trust if 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 that 
idea that you can't stay at home because we know you just want to have a cup of tea with the wife. That's not going to work. That's not a convincing argument, is it? Yes, but that isn't the argument. It's all of those things that I've just said. And part of the part of the argument, without doubt, is that a lot of people do need to be managed and motivated. It's a simple fact of life. You know, if you allow people to become lazy, a lot of them will. We've all got a little streak of laziness in them. I have as well. You know, I've been on quarantine this weekend and I've quite enjoyed for a weekend doing very little work. Um, we've, we've all got that tendency to, to relax. It's very few people that drive themselves as hard at home as they would in the office. But, you know, it's not all about they can have a cup of tea with a wife. It's all of the other factors. It's the inspiration, inspiration, the motivation, bouncing ideas, the think tanks. You know, it's all about generating that lively, driven uh, economically advantageous environment, uh, not just the couple of two with the wife, of course. How, how do you think we're, we're going to make the case? Because my view is simple. I think people should be back in the office because I think that generates creativity, which in turns uh, can be hugely productive uh, for, for whatever business you're working in. Uh, and without it, you lose that contact. So I'm very clear about what I think. But there are people who now think this is the default position. I, I know one company that's told its employees it won't come back for at least a year. And if it does, it'll only be two or three days a week. Now, that might suit that business. But the, 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 we, the, the, if you like, the popular business response at the moment seems to be, oh, yeah, we'll let you work at home. We'll accommodate you. There's only a few companies coming forward. Google did it in April. We've had um, one of the uh, uh, we had Citibank this week. We had a, another big Citibank doing it uh, a week ago. Do you think you're in the minority? And and how much work needs to be done to win this argument? Well, I really don't know whether I'm in the minority or not. But what I do know is that those businesses that choose that route will will not succeed as well as the ones that bring people back into the office depending on the office environment i mean it depends on so many things you can't just put mm -hmm. clearly you can't just put one rule there for everybody but in general people must get back into the office must be there to help train the junior members and bring those people on i mean if you, if you have all your senior members working from home but this is crucial this point it's absolutely crucial Who's going to develop them? You know, it's a, yeah. it's a fiasco. It's a, it's a be an absolute fiasco. But it can happen in a percentage of employees in a percentage of businesses. And so I'm not against working from home at all for the appropriate situation. Do you think but government are helping? Sorry to cut you off there. I'm just pressed for time. But do you think government are helping? Because they've been all over the place. One minute is work at home. The next minute is keep the sandwich bars open, go into London or something. Are government helping or should they be a bit more well, bold? That's, uh, that, that, that's that's typical government, isn't it? They are all over the place and uh, they need to be focused on what's right rather than what they think might sound politically correct. Um, and governments are always making these political decisions for popularity. But I absolutely urge the government to get people back to work, get people back into the offices. And those employers and employees that want to have separate agreements to work from home, that then changes their contract of employment, that's fine. You know, there's nothing wrong with that whatsoever. We've proven that we can't work. John Caudle, if you can hear me, business leader, philanthropist and founder of Phones for You. Thank you very much for joining us. Clear